welcome back to In the Kingdom where we talk about living on earth as we will be in heaven or at least as close as we can. And today you are joining me in the pickup line at my kid's school. I took today off so that I could try to catch up on some much needed things that we need to get done before Passover starts. One of those things being bringing you guys some videos. So I was thinking back to when I first started keeping um, like these biblical feasts and stuff. I like I studied them for years and thought, why don't we do this? Why don't we keep this? I studied it for a long time before I ever kept the first one. And I thought, you know what? If I had it to do over again, I wish I would have just started. Um, and I think if it would have been simpler and if it didn't seem so complicated and so ritualistic and that there were so many things that you had to do just so, I think I would have started earlier. So for today's video, I want to get you guys like a super basic, like you just have to start like absolutely stripped down to the bare minimum. This is what I would do if I had started over again, just a basic Passover meal, Passover Seder. So um, first of all, the thing that you would have to do is go shopping. So I'm going to take you shopping with me right now. So the first thing you're going to need to get is a big bunch of parsley. You're going to need some kind of bitter lettuce, like a romaine lettuce or um, celery leaf. You can also, instead of using lettuce, you can get the horseradish root, which represents the root of sin is bitterness and all this. It is found with your root vegetables, and it looks like this. Um, you will need to get a whole pickled beet, which represents the sacrificial lamb. Some people use a shank bone or a chicken bone. I'm vegetarian, so I use the whole beet. And you will need horseradish, which is the most memorable part of this Seder celebration. And then in my store, this was in Kroger's, and we actually had a whole section just for Passover, which is truly rare for my area. Um, but I was super excited to find it. They had matzo crackers. They had matzo ball mix. They had potato cake mix. Um, they had matzo meal. And they also had the traditional fish that people eat, which ugh, it just looks totally gross. So we're not going there. But um, if you cannot find matzo crackers, you can use like soft taco shells or like um, just some kind of unleavened type of bread. You can use that in a pinch. So your Seder plate is made up of six bowls around in a circle and one bowl in the center. In the first bowl, you will put your horseradish. The second bowl has your bitter herb or your bitter roots. So you can take, if you have the root there, of course, you can't use that to dip. But you can dip your romaine lettuce or celery leaf into each your um, bitter herbs if you want to. The next bowl has your apple, apple relish, which I'll point post the link down the bottom of how you can make that. And then your pickle beets or your shank bone goes in this bowl. And your parsley, big bunch of parsley in that bowl. The last bowl has like a roasted egg or you can use an edible flower. I chose an edible flower. And the center bowl has a bowl of salt water. You will also need some grape juice or some people drink wine. We got sparkling grape juice and regular grape juice. So I just wanted to show you what the matzo cracker looks like. It's, it represents Jesus very well because it looks pierced and it's bruised and um, it's striped just like he was wounded for our transgressions. Um, you will take three pieces of matzah and each piece represents something different. So I showed you how to make a matzah tosh in a previous video, but if you do not have a matzah tosh, don't you fear, I have a solution for you. So you can just take your three pieces of bread your unleavened bread, and you will wrap them all together in a towel. You will take out the centerpiece. It represents the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So you take out the Son, which is the centerpiece. You'll break it in half, and you'll wrap it in another um, towel, which represents a tomb, and the leader of the ceremony will hide it somewhere for the kids to find later. So your basic Seder, which just means order of service, goes like this. You will start your service with prayer. The leader will just open up with prayer and thank God for what we're about to learn today. And then you will kind of do a toast, a toast to sanctification, which is what we are learning about at our Seder. So um, you drink like or take a sip of a cup of of wine or your grape juice. And then it's traditional to do like a hand washing, which kind of represents baptism, but it's not really like super hand washing. You're kind of just dipping your fingers in the water and talking about how what we're learning about today is what makes us clean and makes us a new person. So then you take your parsley. Your parsley represents a new life because it's green. You take your parsley and put it into the salt water, which rep represents the Israelites going through the Red Sea to come out a new nation. To us, it is represents that Jesus went through the pain of death 
to make us a new nation in him. And then you will take your three pieces of matzah bread and you'll take out the center one. You will break it. And the leader of the ceremony or the leader of your service will take the center piece of bread and hide it somewhere in the house for the kids to find later. This is now called the afikomen, which means it comes later. So then you will start using your Seder dish to tell the rest of the story of what happened at Passover. At this point, you will drink another toast to deliverance, which is what we are about to learn about. So you will take your horseradish. Everyone will dip either a piece of matzah in it, or you can dip your bitter um, lettuce in it. And everybody takes a bite. This represents the bitterness of slavery um, of the Israelites and also the bitterness of our slavery to sin that we could not free ourselves from. This is a slavery that we needed someone to save us from. And next you will take a bite of the apple relish, um, and this represents the bricks that the Israelites made while they were in slavery. But if you think about it, the apple relish tastes so sweet. It tastes so good. It is the best tasting thing on the Seder dish. And sin for a moment can taste like it's sweet, but it ends up being bitter. And in fact, some people will make like an apple relish and horseradish sandwich and eat that after they've tasted the apple relish. After this, you will explain that the beets or the shank bone represents that the Messiah came as the sacrificial Passover lamb for us. And then the flour or the egg represents a newness of life that was bought for us by the sacrifice that Jesus made as our Passover lamb. And then after this, you explained all of the Seder plate. Now you will take part in eating your yummy dinner that everybody has been waiting for. After the dinner's over, the children will leave the table and go find the hidden piece of matzah. And the one that finds it gets a prize for um, finding the matzah or the afikomen. So then the leader of the ceremony will take the afikomen, the hidden piece of matzah, and they will break it and pass it out just like in communion. And here you would speak about... Um, that Jesus' body was broken and the sacrifice that he made. And then just like in communion, you will do another toast. And this toast is to the cup of redemption that Jesus or Yeshua has redeemed us from the curse of sin. And then um, you will end your ceremony or get ready to end your ceremony with praise and worship. When you read in the Bible that Jesus and his uh, disciples sang hymns, they were ending their service just like you did by singing praise songs and then doing another toast of grape juice to um, the cup of praise, of worship to God for what we have learned today. And then it's always traditional to end the ceremony by saying next year in Jerusalem. And this is significant because not only are we hoping that next year we'll be in the new Jerusalem with our Messiah when he comes back again, but we're also saying may the Israelites, may the Jewish people celebrate Jesus in the same way as their Messiah next year in Jerusalem. So this Haggadah, which is the order of service, I got from Founded in Truth. It's called Broken for You. This is what we used last year. If you want something more elaborate, it's got like all kinds of stuff you can add to your Seder. But you can make it just as simple as we did just now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty basic. It's all symbolism. And all you have to do is just start. And um, it really is just about telling the story. It's a memorial of what our Messiah did when he died for us, whenever he um, was our Passover lamb and you're celebrating that and sharing that story with your family and some hopefully some friends that you invite over to your house too to celebrate these things with you so I'm hoping to get you some videos for the apple relish that you make and um, also for some vegan matzo ball soup I'm very excited about that I know I'm eating that this Passover maybe you will be too if I get the video up so I will see you guys later have a happy Passover and happy planning and be love and live for the kingdom to come bye